The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Celebration, it's a very special day. Come and share a jubilation. There's a new king for today. See the shepherds hurry down to Bethlehem. Days in wonder at the sun of God. Join the celebrations. It's a very special day. Welcome to our Christmas Day service from Alba Baptist Church. I'm Terry Smith, the pastor there, and we want to wish you a Christmas that's really full of joy. But you say, there's not much joy around just now, is there? With the new COVID variant, there are 100,000 new cases a day. The doctors and the nurses and the carers are exhausted, and our hospitals are full. People have lost their jobs. They can't afford their rent. A quarter of a million families are homeless. That means that one in 50 children aren't going to their own beds at night. They're sleeping in sheds or derelict buildings, in cars or out on the streets. And with the isolation, issues of abuse and mental health have soared. Children's development is being stunted. And that's just in the UK one of the richest countries of the world. Where's the joy in all this? But there wasn't much joy surrounding the birth of Jesus either, was there? Remember, Mary was pregnant out of wedlock. Think of the tension and the hostility she faced. In fact, she could have been stoned to death. What about her relationship with Joseph and her family? No wonder she left her home and spent time with Elizabeth in Judea. Then, just before the birth, she had to leave her family and women friends who could have helped her with the delivery. When they got to Bethlehem, there was no suitable accommodation. They were homeless. Mary giving birth along with the animals. No hygiene, no midwife. On top of everything, The country was controlled by an occupying power. The Roman soldiers were everywhere. There was constant tension in the air. Fear, family separation, tension, limited medical resources, hostility, arguments. That all rings bells with us today, doesn't it? But what we are going through helps us to empathise with what Mary and Joseph experienced. 
But what we find is that the birth of Jesus is surrounded by joyful songs. They're not all gloomy at all these problems. They're joyful. Think of Mary's song when she visits Elizabeth, My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. Or Zechariah's song, Praise to the Lord, for he has come and redeemed his people. The angel's song, Glory to God in the highest. Simeon's song, My eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared for all the peoples. What we are celebrating trumps all the grimness, all the gloom, all the ghastly things that are happening round about us. Why? The Saviour of the world has been born. The very Word of God has come to share our lives. Yes, He knows all about our troubles. He's come to share them with us. O oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. <laughs> Yes, Lord, we greet you, born this happy morning. The Messiah has arrived. The time of waiting is over. So now we can light the fifth candle on our Advent wreath. The Son of God has become a Son of Man, so that the sons and daughters of man can become sons and daughters of God. 
That's why we celebrate in the midst of this fallen and suffering world. Emmanuel, God with us, he's come to experience the pain, the pressures, the vulnerability, the suffering that we all have. He has made his dwelling with us. The eternal Son of God has become a helpless newborn baby, wrapped in cloths and lying in an animal feeding trough. This is our God, come to share life with us, to suffer rejection, to die for us, so that we can share life with him. That's why we celebrate. So, what have we got lined up for the rest of this service? Well, we've got another carol coming up, and a couple of songs led by Dave and Carolyn. The words will be up on the screen, so do sing along with us at home, won't you? If any of you have hearing problems, there are subtitles available. Just click on the icon at the bottom right of your screen. Then we've got a couple of sketches from the Bible Society in which Di Woolridge and Michael Barnes act as rough sleepers and give us their take on the old carol while shepherds watch their flocks. In Jesus' time, shepherds were outcasts from society. Nobody wanted to associate with them. So the homeless identify with them. Elizabeth's going to read a couple of Bible verses which are familiar to us at this time of year. And then Claire Blatchford, a newly appointed regional minister in the EBA, will reflect with us on the theme of great expectations. So, let's pray together. Loving Father, Thank you for sending Jesus to share in our lives in this suffering world. Thank you for the hope and the peace of mind which this gives us. Please now fill us with your Holy Spirit as we identify ever more closely with Jesus and celebrate with joy this Christmas day. Amen. Our next song is Emmanuel, O oh Emmanuel, sharing my humanness, my shame, feeling my weaknesses, my pain. And then we'll have part one of the Rough Sleepers sketch. Oh, 
Excuse me. Love the song, by the way. Oh, no, 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 I'm not after change. Look, don't be afraid. It's good news and it's for everybody. Look, I get it. You don't believe me. I don't blame you. You don't know me. I don't know what some people say about people like me. Rough, Rough sleepers, sleepers, street sellers, grubby vendors, dregs of society, right? Look, I'll level with you. I'm a nobody. But last night I met somebody and I've got to tell everybody. No, wait, please, just, please, just please, give me just two, two minutes. minutes. Seriously. Me and my mate, we're getting set up for the night, right? Then this, this, this light, light and it just, just stuns us. us. All I can describe it is like God's glory surrounds us. Sounds crazy, right? The most captivating character you'd ever laid eyes on. Voice like an angel, exhilarating and terrifying, breathtaking and beautiful. We were bricking it. He says, don't, don't be, be afraid. afraid. It's good news and it's for everybody. He says, a direct line to David's lineage has arrived to answer the SOS signal of our hearts. He's come, He's come to, to rescue. rescue. Then he tells us to go see for ourselves. Camped in an underpass, covered with rags, you'll find him in a tent, wrapped up in a sleeping bag. You probably think I've been on the spices, right? I think it too. I mean, who delivers a message like that to somebody, to somebody like, like this? this? You're right. I'm a nobody. But what he said kept ringing in my ears so clearly. Don't, Don't be, be afraid. afraid. It's good news and it's for everybody. Look, we, we might be a bunch of nobodies, but nobody was stopping us from searching out this somebody and then these rough sleepers met a saviour. Street sellers met a king. And we knew we had to savour this moment because it changes, changes everything. everything. And it dawned on me. He's come for the nobodies. He's come to show them that to him there's somebody. To one day become a nobody. To offer up his status of somebody. So everybody who reaches out to him can be part of his family. Camped in an underpass, covered with rags. This is good news, wrapped up in a sleeping bag. Look, I'm not talking bold, but do yourself a favor. Don't just take the word of this rough sleeping stranger. Come see for yourself. Come and meet him. Come and meet the savior. Shepherd swiftly 
from your strength arise to see the Savior of the world. Oh, now carry me to Bethlehem to see the Lord appear to men. Just as poor as was the stable man, the Prince of Glory when he came. Look, I'm not after change. Please, don't be afraid. It's good news. And it's for everybody. Rough sleepers watched their dogs by night Or seated on the I've just come from meeting somebody and I've got to tell everybody Cos it's good news and it's for everybody A tent in an underpass covered with rags This is good news wrapped up in a sleeping bag All glory to be God on high and on the I'm not talking bull, but do yourself a favour. Don't just take the word of this rough sleeping stranger. See for yourself. Come and meet the Saviour. The Saviour who is Christ the Lord, the love of God displayed.
The reading is from Isaiah 9, verses 1 to 2 and 6 to 7. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Christmas is full of surprises. Christmas 2020 was a big surprise when we were all told we weren't able to celebrate the way we had hoped. But I believe that Christmas has always been full of surprises. Have you ever got what you expected for Christmas? Have you always got what you needed? Have you always got what you wanted? What do you expect at Christmas? Presents? Turkey? Snow? The sound of music on TV, perhaps? Repeats of the Morecambe and Wise Christmas show from the 1970s? A beautiful Christmas tree? Back in 2017, Chloe Jones went to her local supermarket with her husband and young son to buy a new Christmas tree. They bought a five foot pre-lit tree with a beautiful picture on the box. Chloe said, we happily skipped to the till to pay for our purchase and headed home excited for all the Christmas fun we were going to have on a cold Sunday afternoon. But this is what the family found when they opened the box. A Christmas tree that looks like it's had a hard night on the town. I couldn't see through the tears. It was hilarious, Chloe laughed. It took me weeks to convince my husband to let me get a new tree as our old one was too big. And that was what we ended up with. Does Christmas always live up to our expectations? When I look back to memories of Christmas past, I particularly remember Christmas from my childhood. I always find that I remember Christmas Eve as much as I remember Christmas Day. Travelling to grandparents, setting out the stockings and getting into new pyjamas bought especially for Christmas. And then waking up early Christmas morning, reading the letter that had been written by Father Christmas, sitting next to the empty plate with a few crumbs left from the mince pie. Father Christmas was always very detailed when he came to our house. I also remember the Christmas catalogues from the various shops and looking through the Argus catalogue in particular in preparation of writing my Christmas list. I also remember the Christmas adverts, particularly the latest, greatest, ever more spectacular, wonderful Woolworths Christmas show. If you search for them on YouTube, I don't think they had quite the same budget as this year's adverts with Audi's Ebanana, Scrooge and John Lewis's Unexpected Guest reportedly costing £5 million. But what they did have was an array of wonderful gifts ranging from a pack of three cassette tapes for £3.99 to a speak and spell costing £24.95, batteries not included. But whatever I had put on my Christmas list back in 1983, there have always been expectations, wants and desires for Christmas. At this moment, we find ourselves between expectation and celebration. For those who have been waiting, whether a child for their presence or a faithful servant for their saviour, the time of waiting will eventually come to an end. The countdown is on. And yet Advent has always been marked by a spirit of expectation and longing. 
of waiting for God to step into his world to intervene on behalf of his people. The story of Christmas really begins in the Old Testament. The promise of a coming Messiah filled the pages of the Hebrew Bible and the Jews were watching for his coming. After the first five books, there is a mixture of history and prophecy. And then it ends with a number of books where God never speaks. His voice is not heard. And in two books, Esther and Song of Songs, he is not mentioned at all. There are long years of silence where God seems to be absent. But all of this was for a purpose. It was designed to create a longing for God's return to his people. The promise of the restoration of Jerusalem and the coming of the Messiah grew as the people agonised over their condition of exile and the occupation of their homeland. And by the time the New Testament opens with the arrival of Jesus Christ, messianic hopes were at fever pitch. In his book entitled The Bible Jesus Read, Philip Yancey tells of a Jewish friend who led tour groups in Israel. As he was growing up, his parents forbade him even to mention the name of Jesus. But in order to accommodate the Christian groups he was leading, he was forced to read the New Testament and study the life of Jesus. He was struck by how the Jewish and Christian faiths were intertwined. Yancey writes, he learned that the conservative Christian groups believed world history was moving toward a culmination in which Israel would play a crucial role. They kept talking about the second coming of Jesus, quoting the prophecies he had learned in Hebrew school. As he listened to them, he realised that he and they were waiting for the same thing, a Messiah, a Prince of Peace to restore justice and peace to a badly fractured planet. The Christians anticipated Messiah's second coming. As a Jew, he was still looking for the first coming. Wouldn't it be amazing, he once told me, if we found out we were all waiting for the same person? And of course we are. We worship the Messiah prophesied about in the Old Testament who came to the world and will return to the world to establish his righteous kingdom on earth. In the Old Testament, he was anticipated, and in the New, he is fulfilled. He is the one for whom the world was waiting. The world was waiting in response to a promise. As we prepare to celebrate Christmas, we do so because of the promise. Isaiah 9 verses 6 to 7 say, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, And the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Jesus knew the scriptures and he understood that he was the fulfilment of its prophecies. During his sermon on the Galilean mountainside, he said, Do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. When he came, he quoted the Old Testament to describe his ministry and its fulfilment of the promise. He said, If you believe Moses, you will believe me for he wrote about me. Why was a promise needed? Because these were the people who were living in gloom and walking in darkness. The great covenant of God and the promises of his blessings seemed to have been derailed. They had not experienced the blessings of the covenant and they were currently living under its curse. Their land had been overrun by their enemies. Jerusalem had been destroyed and the temple had been looted and burnt down. They'd been taken captive and deported into a strange land. And yet, those in exile clung to the promise of a Messiah and the restoration of Jerusalem, and it gave them hope. 
Jesus' coming was a promise fulfilled. As he stood in the synagogue in Nazareth, Jesus read the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, which said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he looked at those around him and said, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. It was necessary that the promise was fulfilled. The gospel tells us of a saviour. The law told us about our sin and how far from God we were. And yet God came near to us, Emmanuel. Roughly 400 years had passed since the prophet Malachi had spoken. And in that time, the people of Israel had become victim to really... uh, regional politics and as the Roman Empire grew into the dominant force. This so-called 400 years of silence left God's people wondering what the future held. And when God did appear, they couldn't have imagined it would happen the way it did. Even when the promise was fulfilled, it seemed too good to be true. God came in a form that they were not expecting. Jesus did not seem the picture they had in their mind from their understanding of the Old Testament prophecies. He had to explain that he indeed was the one of whom the scriptures spoke. He hadn't come as a warrior king. He came as a humble teacher. He hadn't come to establish the political security of Israel, but to establish a spiritual kingdom. He had not come to overrun the Romans. He was born in a cave kept for animals instead of a palace. Except for his clothing, he did not own a single thing. Of all the things the people of Jesus' day could not understand, this was the hardest of all. They could accept a Messiah who would kill his enemies, but they could not understand one who would allow his enemies to kill him. They understood power, but they could not understand weakness. And yet Emmanuel is the one who brought peace. Though it did not appear so, he conquered the world and defeated death. And from that confidence, we too find peace. What the world didn't understand at the time was that the birth of that baby shook the very foundations of the universe. It was the sign that God had won. This baby would be the sign that everything would now be different. Here is the peace that I believe we each need today. Since the day Christ came, the reign of evil ended. God came into the world that he created. It was the promise of the Old Testament present in the new and he will reign eternally. The angel says to us, as he said to those simple shepherds, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Our reading from Isaiah speaks of Christ's birth as a prophecy, not a random act, not an accidental birth that God decided to use, but a planned event. The rod of the oppressor has been broken. A child is born with authority on his shoulders. Every year, as we celebrate together, we remember what happened over 2,000 years ago. And as we celebrate with Mary and Joseph and the shepherds, as we move from that period of expectation to that period of great celebration, celebration so great that we shouldn't just give one day a year to it. And, not, and so wonderful that we choose to celebrate it every year. The birth 
of no ordinary child, an extraordinary event of huge planetary significance, which affects us all, even many centuries later. We are here solely because of that one event, but an event that exists within a complicated timeline of God's plan for us all and for his world. So as you prepare with great expectation this year, what difference will Jesus make to the way you spend the next few weeks other than family gatherings, food and drink and perhaps extra time off work? Has the birth of Jesus changed your life? Is his life continuing to change yours as his presence among us by God's spirit transforms us as individuals, as churches and as communities? I pray God's blessing upon you this Advent and Christmas. Thank you, Claire. Shall we pray together? Father, we pray for those who are finding life very hard at the moment, those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, those who are homeless, those who've lost their jobs, those who have serious health problems. Thank you that you are with us. Emmanuel. Thank you for the great expectations we can have because of him. Please bring light into our darkness, hope into our despair, comfort into our sorrow, and peace into our turmoil. Father, please fill us with your Holy Spirit and with joy this Christmas time. Amen. Thank you very much to all our contributors to our service today. Thank you to Claire for her meditation, to Bible Society actors for their homeless sketch, and to Elizabeth and Dave and Carolyn for their contributions. Thank you so much. Tomorrow, well, it's Sunday, so we've got another service. Sunday the 26th, that's Boxing Day. And what we've done is to arrange for a lovely carol service made by Compassion in conjunction with Premier Christian Radio to be available for us. You won't want to miss this. It's a special treat. As usual, we'll email the link to you if you're on our mailing list, and the link will also be on the website. Also on the website are our contact details if you want to ask anything, or discuss anything, or tell us something that you'd like us to pray about. On the website, too, are links to past services, so that you can catch up on those if you've missed any. There, too, are the Advent Reflections. They've just come to an end for this year, but the ones that we've had earlier in the month, they're available still on the website. The Alternative Christmas Card is also still there. It's not too late to add your greetings if you'd like to. Just email your greeting and we'll get it put up onto the website, onto the card for you. If you'd like to give a gift to World Vision, then please just drop that in to Albra Baptist Church or send us a cheque. We're going to close with our final carol, Once in Royal David City. And carrying on our theme, with the poor and meek and lowly, lived on earth, our Saviour holy. And now hear God's blessing as we part. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and fill you with peace and joy as you share life with him. Amen. Once in royal David city stood a lowly cattle share. 
need her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was the mother, mother. Jesus Christ, the little child. Is true. 